Coming up next, Fresh Dew with Pasto and Kichi Ene. Pastor Nkechi Ene, and we're continuing our message series, Conquering New Grounds. Conquering New Grounds. This is part six, I believe, of that message. Our text was from Joshua chapter three, and I'll read from verse one to five and then 14 to 17. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from Acacia Grove and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near it that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way before. For you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Verse 14, let's see the wonders that took place. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. And as those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priests who bore the Ark dipped in the edge of the water for the Jordan overflows all its banks during the whole time of harvest that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap or I like to say stood at attention rose in a heap very far away at Adam the city that is beside Zaratan so the waters that went down into the sea of the Arabah the salt sea failed and were cut off and the people crossed over opposite Jericho. Then the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. And all Israel crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. Hallelujah. Conquering new grounds. Remember the verse we saw earlier, for you have not passed this way before. And I believe that a lot of us have new grounds, new levels, new territories of God's goodness awaiting us this year and in the years to come. And we've been learning how to conquer these new grounds, new grounds, new levels, new heights, new testimonies, new miracles ahead of us as children of God. And we've got to learn how to conquer those new grounds and walk into them. Hallelujah. So we, 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 we use this story to to introduce the message and then we stayed with the text of the the story of the book of the story of David rather when he killed Goliath Goliath the giant and I'm sure a lot of us know that story the story of David when he killed Goliath and let me read just a portion of that story um which we're going to kick off with today. Remember we said so far from that story that to conquer new grounds, your mentality matters. If you've been watching this um, series, you heard that before, your mentality matters. David had the mentality of a conqueror. If you're going to conquer new grounds, you've got to have the mentality of a conqueror. Your method matters. David refused to use the armor of Saul and he wanted to use the methods that had been proved and tested and the ones he was used to. And he killed Goliath, not with the king's armor, but with a few stones and a slingshot that was what he used to kill Goliath. So your mentality matters, your method matters. And then we found out that your motive matters. Why do you want to conquer new grounds? Why do you want to enter new levels? Why do you want to enjoy new heights and new testimonies in God? Your motive matters. The reasons why you want the things you want or the reasons why you do the things you do. Then last week, we began to look at another point to conquer new grounds. Your mobility matters. Your mobility matters. Movement is very important in your conquest conquering new grounds, child of God. Your mobility matters. And so I'm going to read from 1 Samuel 17 
And I'll just read from verse 48. You can read the whole of 1 Samuel and, you know, see the whole story of David killing Goliath if you don't know that story already. So 1 Samuel 17, look at verse 48. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried, note that, David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and stood over the Philistine took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Look at what we read there. David hurried and ran towards Goliath. David hurried and ran towards Goliath. And even after Goliath fell down, after he hit him in the forehead with a stone, David still ran towards Goliath and took Goliath's sword and cut Goliath's head off. Your mobility matters. David didn't stand in one point and say, well, you know, let me stand from here. It's a safe distance and let me see if my stone will get to Goliath. No, he ran towards the new grounds he was about to conquer. Child of God, you've got to move. Your mobility matters. And we found out last week that motion is symbolic of change. Remember we said that motion is symbolic of change and change is synonymous with the living the only thing that doesn't change is change i want to say it again the only thing that doesn't change is change so mobility motion movement and this will happen easily for you like we said last week when you are dissatisfied when you become dissatisfied with your present location a dissatisfaction that comes from god when you have expectations of your future location then you will move and you will run towards the new grounds that god wants you to conquer and you know when you look through the scriptures and you see places where people conquered new grounds people had new levels new testimonies new heights new miracles new test territories um when they conquered these things we found out that in most of these places we can see that motion took place movement took place there had to be a relocation think about abraham abraham was where he was and god told him get up and go go to a land that i would show you can you imagine if abraham refused to be mobile can you imagine if he said look i've always lived here and my father brought us here and though my father is dead i want to stay here and raise my my, my family here no god said to him get up and go to a land that i would show you and abraham was mobile he moved and he conquered new ground and we are still children of abraham today so you've got to move in order to conquer new ground look again look another example the story of Eli Elijah, when Elijah had to, in the famine, God told him to move. First Kings 17. And look at what it says. And Elijah, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Look at the next thing that happened. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook cherries which flows into the jordan and it will be that you shall drink from the brook and i have commanded the ravens to feed you there so you see motion elijah gave the word but then god said to him now get up and go get up and go there's new grounds i want you to conquer there are new things ahead of you get up and go and he sent him to a place where ravens ravens were supposed to feed him if you know anything about ravens ravens don't even feed their young that's new ground that's that's new testimony. That's a new miracle for a raven that doesn't even feed its own young one. That's how selfish the raven is. It's a bird. That's how selfish the raven is. It doesn't even feed its own young one. And these ravens were the, were the ones that God commanded to feed Elijah. But what if Elijah refused to move? What if he said, no, 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 I'm going to stay here. I can't give this kind of prophecy and then leave. Ahab and co will think that I'm running away. Let me stay here and prove that I'm not afraid. He obeyed what God said to him and he got up and he left to conquer new ground child of God I want to say it again you've got to be mobile you've got to be mobile and he didn't stay in the brook Cherith all that time forever after a while God spoke to him again and in verse 9 he says arise go to Zarephath another motion arise go to Zarephath which belongs to Sidon and dwell there see I have commanded a widow there to provide for you to take care of you so after a while the ravens were not the, the, the level of the ravens had, had ended 
dead and God said to him now get up and go how about if Elijah said well you know you know Lord you told me to move and I'm not I'm just tired of moving around I want to stay in one place he would have been there the ravens would have stopped feeding him and a widow in Zarephath also would have missed her miracle because Elijah wouldn't have done what the Lord asked him to do child of God we need to move and like I said last week many times the motion needs to first of all take place in our minds in our minds our mentalities many times are stuck in certain places we we think in certain ways and we refuse to move the way we, we refuse to move rather from the way we have always thought about something the whole purpose of reading the word of God studying the word of God spending time with the word of God renewing your mind with the word of God is to get your thinking to line up with that of the word of God many times as Christians we use the word carnality and we think carnality means the way you dress or the way you eat or the way you talk those may all be reflections of carnality but carnality is really defined as this it's a way of thinking that is contrary to the word of God a way of thinking that is contrary to the word of God and a lot of us are stuck in our carnality we may look very spiritual we may sound very spiritual but for as long as our thinking is at variance with the word of God then we will not conquer the kind of new grounds that God has laid in front of us this year and in the years to come glory be to God we've got to move motion in our minds in our actions in the things we've always believed and let them begin to Line up, hallelujah, with the word of God. Look at another example when um, there was the wedding in Cana and the wine finished. And what did Jesus' mother say to them? He says, look, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And Jesus came and said to them, now get the water pots and fill them with water. And they moved and they got the water pots. And you see, some of these examples we're looking at, we're seeing that people had to do things that were abnormal. People had to do things that looked weird. Why would you fill water pots with water when it was wine you were expecting? Why would you go to a brook? You had just proclaimed a drought and a famine. Why why would you go to a brook that was supposed to dry up and apart from that you expected ravens who don't even feed their young to feed you why would you go to a widow to take care of you and provide for you why would you make that movement why would you do that a widow the assumption is she probably can't even take care of herself and her own children but there was motion there was mobility child of god if you will conquer new grounds you've got to be mobile you've got to be mobile one particular area i want to I want to talk about is the area of tradition and you know a lot of us believers we have just stayed put in the area of tradition and we're missing out on so many miracles missing out on so many testimonies missing out on so many wonderful things that God has in store for us because we refuse to move from the traditions of men from the way they have always done it in my village or from the way it has always been done in my church or the way my denomination has always believed it it's time to stick your head in the word of god and begin to find out what the word of god has to say about the situation can you believe that there are still believers who wouldn't get married to another believer because of a caste system because of a system in a in 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 a in a, in a society or in a village setting where they say this person is in Ebola and they call it an Sue, this person is an osu or this person is a this and I'm, i know some of you are getting shocked watching me and you're saying pastor Nkechi, don't just go there go anywhere else but don't go there you don't understand traditional things if you understand traditional things you won't even go there what are you saying if somebody is born again as long as her lineage is that of an osu i won't touch the person be mobile that's what i have to say to you motion move and you will conquer new grounds that lady whom her her heritage has called an osu She's born again, child of God. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You say, well, pastor, it's not that simple. That's your problem. You want to make the gospel difficult. You want to make the word of God difficult. But it's so simple, profound, and true. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. So that lady has been disconnected from her, her, her lineage. And she has a new lineage in Christ. You say, well, you know, if I marry her, my people will not accept her. Her people will not accept me well it's high time somebody made a change if they don't accept you the church of Jesus Christ the true church of Jesus Christ would accept you and by the time you begin to conquer new grounds because you took that step in God because you were mobile a lot of other people will be liberated from that terrible bondage and that terrible tradition look at what Jesus has to say about tradition look at what he has to say Mark chapter 7 and look at verse 8 he says for laying aside the commandment of men you hold 
you hold you see that picture like somebody refusing to move you hold the tradition of men the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do he said to them all too well you reject the commandment of god that you may keep your tradition I mean, look 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 at this if somebody says to you you know are you likely to do away um, with what God says because of what a man says. If somebody puts it to you in that simple way, what are you likely to say, child? Oh, no, I will hold on to what God says. How can I do away with what God says because of what man says? Well, that's exactly what you do when you hold on to certain traditions. Jesus says you hold on to those traditions. You refuse to move from those traditions and you reject, you do away with the commandments of God in order to hold on to, to traditions. Look at what he says happens therefore in verse 13. He says, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down and many such things you do tradition is an evil thing i want to say it again tradition is an evil thing or let me put it this way let me let me clarify it a lot of traditions that are contrary to the word of god are evil let me correct that statement because some traditions may be good traditions so as long as these traditions are contrary to the word of god as long as they contradict the word of god then they are evil as long as they contradict the word of god they are evil jesus says you make the word of god have no effect in your life because you hold on you hold on to the traditions of men because you refuse to move from what the traditions of men have said you, you know a good example of what traditions can do is a story I've heard, and a lot of you may have heard that story, of how a young lady, you know, always when she had to cook a piece of meat, a certain part of an animal, let's, let's say a cow, for example, she had to cook a certain part of the cow, she would always cut off certain parts of the you know, let's just for the purpose of this example, take a, ca a cow leg. And each time she had to cook a cow leg, she would cut a certain part, certain parts of the cow leg off and then put it in the pot. Doesn't matter the size of the pot. She would put it in the pot. And one day her daughter asked her, I said, Mom, why is it that every time you want to cook a cow leg, you always cut this part, this part, and those parts you cut off, they are not bad. Why do you always cut them off, Mom? And th the mother said, you know, I never really thought about that. You know, I've always seen my mom do that. Maybe you should ask grandma why grandma always you know does that so the little girl went and asked her grandma grandma why is it that every time you know mom wants to cut a piece of cow leg she always cuts this part and this part and she says you've always done it that way why have you always done it that way grandma and grandma thinks i say you know that's a good question i've never really thought about that my mom always did it that way and let's assume that great grandma is alive and so the little one goes to great grandma great grandma and she repeats the whole story again why do you do it this way and great great grandma thinks and says you know coming to think of it i've always done it this way because the very first time i wanted to cook a piece of cow leg the only pot the only the only pot i had in the kitchen was too small can you can you get that the only pot i had in the kitchen was too small so i had to take that piece of cow leg and cut certain parts of it off and then fit it in the pot because the pot was too small and so i always did it that way and your grandma grew up and watched me always do it that way and your mom grew up and watched your grandma always do it that way and you probably would have done it that way if you didn't stop to ask your mom and say why have you done it this way child of god there are many things that are handed down jesus said traditions of men are handed handed down some of them are handed down in the church of jesus christ too many things are handed down and we stay put we are stagnated we refuse to move from some of those things well it's time we we we, we, we got mobile it's time we put some motion it's time we began to ask certain questions and we began to say why do we do these things the way we do them let's look into the word of god and let's find out what the word of god has to say about it glory be to god and when we find out what the word of god has to say about it if it is contrary to what the traditions of men or the traditions of our denomination or the traditions of whatever it is we've always known has if, if it's contrary to what those traditions have always taught us then it's time to make a move it's time to be mobile it's time to run towards something new and when you do that just like david you will conquer new ground glory be to god you will conquer new ground you will conquer new ground thank you father for your word thank you father for motion Thank you for mobility. Thank you for change, Lord. Thank you, Father. We will conquer new ground. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. If you just watch the message and 
you know you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. You haven't made that commitment to make him the Lord and Savior of your life. Well, that's one step you can take right now. That's motion. That's mobility. And I want to invite you to do that. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that he's alive and well, and he died for you, and he, he, he rose again that you may enjoy life and enjoy it more abundantly, you can say this prayer out loud, mean it in your heart, but say it after me. Say, oh God, have mercy on me. I confess that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died and he rose again to save me. Jesus, save me now. I belong to you forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Congratulations on praying the most important prayer you will ever pray in your life. You can write us and tell us you prayed this prayer with us and would be able to give you some advice and recommend a good Bible believing church somewhere near you that you can begin to attend. God is now your father. Begin to read his word. Begin to speak to him and he'll begin to speak to you in your heart and speak to you through his word because he wants to have fellowship with you. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on Fresh Dew. I enjoy every single minute that we have together on Fresh Dew. Please write me and tell us what Fresh Dew is doing in your life and tell other people about the program. And as usual, I look forward to being with you same time, same station next week. If you have been blessed by the word today and would like a copy of this particular message, please call 0700 Fresh Dew to place your order today. Please visit freshdew.tv for a complete catalogue of our messages. Come with us as we expand our circle. Come, let us conquer new grounds together. Let us reach for greater heights together. Share the vision, share the provision, and share the blessings. Come. Become a partner today. Here's how to join the Fresh Dew Partnership Circle. Go to freshdew.tv, register, and that's it. You become a partner. Existing partners who have not already done so can also fill in their details online to receive partnership e-letters from Pastor Nkechi. Visit freshdew.tv or call 0803-312-6081 or 0815-065-6361 today for more details.